everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today I've got a great update for you guys on CamGuard. So as you know, we did a long-term study of a couple of aircraft where we took cam, we did the oil changes, we put CamGuard in there and we monitored these aircraft intently for many, many hours. And we've gotten all of these aircraft now over the 40 hour mark. I believe one of them has 80 and one of them, mine, had almost 50 hours on cam guard. So now we have very, very good long-term data specifically on how well cam guard performs in these different aircraft. Now, for those of you who don't know, cam guard is an additive that goes into aviation oils. So as you know, guys know, I like the Corvair motor. And with the Corvair, we're using a uh, Rotella uh, T4. Uh, and what Rotella is, is it is a diesel uh, engine oil. And because of we're using that, I did need to use a diesel additive when comparing it. Now for the other aircraft, it was a Comanche 250. And for that one, it is a Lycoming engine. So we were running Philips XC20W50 and with that aviation cam guard. Regardless of what we're running, the additives and the packages in there are identical. And so we're able to do a direct comparison about how well that these additives work over a long period of time. So before we get too much farther in, let me explain to you guys how we conducted the analysis, what we we're looking at, and how this all works together, specifically on the performance of CamGuard. All right, before we get too far, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, which is CamGuard. CamGuard provides a great product for both aviation and automotive industry, where their product basically, it supplements or it becomes the anti-wear package that is in the oil itself. Now, anti-wear is a process in which you put a product, a compound into the oil and it acts as the sacrificial surface that instead of the surface itself so that when we have wear occurring, it's occurring within those compounds and not on the particles within the engine. As we move forward, let me tell you more about how this works and how we conducted all of the analysis. So all the testing we do in oil analysis is based on ASTM. So ASTM is a standards organization and they provide all of the methods that we use uh, that basically so that we have a standardized set of data across the industry. So we're looking at viscosity. This is done uh, through ASTM, which is called D445. D445 specifies the, uh, me how we measure what's called kinematic viscosity. So kinematic viscosity is where we're looking at the properties of a fluid and its resistance to flow. Uh, for all uh, oils that are out there in the market, are, there is a standard which is through SAE, which is Society of Automotive Engineers. For 15W40, for example, the limit is between 12.5 and 16.3. When you go to a 50 weight oil, it starts at 16.3 and goes up to approximately 22. So when you're looking at these things, as long as you're within that grade, you know that you're meeting the specifications of that oil. Other things we do are, for example, wear metals. Wear metals can be done through ASTM uh, D5185 and a couple other different methodologies, whether you're using uh, inductively coupled uh, plasma optical emission spectrometer, big word just means ICP OES, or you can also use RDE, which is rotating disc electrode optical emission spectrometer. Those are made by Spectro Scientific. Uh, between the two, the values are pretty much identical. There's not a lot of change between the two. Uh, what it's looking at is, uh, in those cases, are you're looking at the particulates in the uh, under eight micron range. So when we see the, the wear, it's in that under eight micron range. Uh, other things we can do are, it's called FTIR analysis, which is Fourier Transform Infrared Spectrometer Analysis, long word. What it does is it takes the infrared spectrum of the oils and looks at specific regions of the spectra to determine what chemical processes have happened. One of the main ones that I focus on is oxidation. Oxidation is a thermal stress to the oil where uh, when we see that number increase, we know that the oils are being thermally loaded for an extended period of time. So there's lots of things we can look at, but specifically for this test, what we were looking at were those three things. We were looking at viscosity by ASTM D445, we we're looking at wear metals by ASTM D5185, and then FTIR, which is a uh, method that was developed by the Joint Oil Analysis Program uh, within the military. So with all of that, we have a very, very interesting set of data, specifically on how CamGuard performed over these 50 hours. When you looked at CamGuard prior, uh, what we saw was a over the board, across the board. I mean, it didn't matter what it was with three different aircraft. We looked at both the Cessna 210, the Comanche 250, and then mine with the Chevy Corvair. 
all of those had a 30% reduction in the applicable wear metals. Now when I say that, there's a reason I say applicable wear metals. So if you look in the data last time, it kind of looked like, oh wait, we didn't see a change this one, why didn't we see a change that one? There's a lot of questions about that. Well, in some of those cases, there was no change from baseline. So a small shift from baseline, and we're talking about in the weeds of the detectable range, if you get a small shift there, kind of at that detection limit, it could look like you have this massive shift. But what we saw was, is at that detection limit, or in those elements that just got to the detection limit, there was no real change. Where we saw the change was in the wear for iron, aluminum, and chromium. Now this is why that is important. So if you look at iron, iron is gonna come from places like uh, the crankshaft, the cylinder walls, it can come from the camshaft, the lifters, all of these different regions where we have metal to metal contact. Another element that's important is chromium. And where we can see chromium is gonna be specifically looking at the piston rings or if you have chrome lined cylinders, we can see chromium wear in those cases as well. The other place that, we, that is important is aluminum. Now most of these aircraft engines, if you look at them real closely, what's different is the cam rides within the case itself. So there is actually no bearings that cover the cam, it's just the actual case of the uh, engine itself. So when we see aluminum wear, it can either be from that cam lobe area, you know, the bearing for the cam, but it can also come from the pistons themselves, the skirts of the pistons, that uh, tapping action that can happen there. So anywhere we're, we're able to provide additional protection or longer protection means that we're gonna have a lower number or a lower value for those types of wear products. And again, we saw that in abundance, especially on this extended test of cam guard. Now, the other thing that was important about cam guard compared to other um, additives, um, a lot of people like to use things like ZDDP plus, STP oil treatment. These have a lot more viscosity to them. And because of that, you'll see a shift upwards in the viscosity. Most of the time, that's not that big a deal, except when your oils are blended towards the upper end of that viscosity band that I talked about earlier that the SAE is part of. One thing that was nice about cam guard is at the levels of which we're putting it into the oil, it didn't shift the oil outside of its SAE range. One thing that I see from, um, for example, in all the oil analysis I look at is people that use the STP, ZDDB plus, and a couple other additives, they tend to put them in on the heavy side and where they're supposed to have a 40 weight oil, they're having actually a 50 weight oil. And in other cases, you're having a 50 weight oil and they put enough in there to actually take it above that 50 weight oil range. Now, why is that important? Well, if you get above those ranges, now at cold start, where you got the engine nice and cool, the oil is kind of at that ambient temperature, it's not going to flow as designed. And so you're gonna have a longer period of time before the oil heats up and moves those lubricated parts it provides the correct protection that you're looking for. The other thing that's nice about cam guard is it does actually form a barrier over time that allows it to kind of maintain that anti-wear uh, cohesive property after the engine shuts down. It provides a little bit more protection for you at that cold startup. All right, so as you can see, I've been tracking the data quite extensively and there's some interesting trends I'd like to point out. So up here on the top, I've got the data for, data for the Comanche. I'm gonna pop that up here on the screen for you guys so you can get a better look at what I'm talking about. So if you look here, what we got was for iron, previous to this is what we reported uh, before, the Comanche was making 0.69 ppm per hour. At the end, we got 0.51 ppm per hour, but more importantly was there was no trend increase after the 40 hour marks. So there was no applicable increase in that value. Now the other one that was interesting, again, this goes back to what I was talking about, about seeing very low values impacting the trends heavily. So on that Comanche, it was at 0.25 ppm per hour initially, that dropped down to 0.13. So it gives us a absolute difference of 62% less wear. Now again, the last one here is in copper where we had 0.33 going, to, I'm sorry, yeah, 0.33 going to 0.12 to a 94% absolute difference. So again, we had very, very low changes, but we did see a change. Now we get over to the Zenith, what was important here was we saw across the board very good results. So what I see here was, is for iron, I went from a 1.39 ppm per hour down to a 0.79 for a 23% reduction. 
chromium again, seeing that small change from 0.14 to 0.15. Again, very, very low, low absolute difference. Same thing here when we look at copper from 0.22 to 0.1. But overall, what we saw was a general decrease in all of the wear metal rates over time. Now, the other thing that was important to me was looking at, for example, the oxidation numbers and the viscosity numbers. So viscosity at baseline with the um, with the specific oil is ranging between 14.7 and 16.17. Across the entire time looking at CamGuard, it kept the oil within that 14 centistoke range. So overall, we saw no degradation in the viscosity and we saw much better wear metal numbers across the entire time in which we were taking a look at the data. Now I am continuing to use CamGuard because I really believe in the product and it does provide very, very good protection in the engine. And again, it does it by using these thiophosphates, these specific types of anti-wear compounds that provide that surface that's gonna be the sacrificial surface as opposed to the metal itself. Now oils do provide lubrication, there's no saying that they don't, but Without the additives, they're not as effective as they could be. And what CamGuard does is it's putting a very, very high concentration of those specific anti-wear compounds into the oil and providing superior protection to your engines for the longevity. So again, I highly recommend CamGuard as a additive for your engine oils because it will decrease the amount of wear you are seeing in your engines. Now, if you guys have any other questions, hit it up in the comments below because I'd like to answer any questions you guys have about how effective CamGuard is or anything else for that matter about what I've been doing here on this channel. But for now, this is me, Larry Nelson, telling you guys, for projects in your garage, aircraft you need to, that you're building, get in the garage, get building, get flying, and I'll see you guys in the air next time.